the people welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video if you're stopping by the channel for the first time please consider subscribing to my channel and while you're at it smash that like button for me i really would appreciate it also hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time i upload a new video be careful down in the comment section of the videos a lot of spam a lot of scammers i will never ask you to contact me by whatsapp or telegram i also do not invest money for my subscribers so please be careful don't get yourself scammed guys if you don't mind get down to that description box click on that instagram link and follow me on instagram richard fane millionaire mentor instagram page brand new page had to shut down my old page which was richard fane 28 had to shut that page. Well, I didn't shut it down. Instagram shut it down. Um, they never really gave me a legitimate reason for shutting it down, but I believe they shut it down because there were a lot of impersonating scammers on Instagram pretending to be me. And they just, I got caught up in that some kind of way because obviously I'm not a scammer. So why they shut my page down, I don't know. But I had to create a new one, which I did. Uh, which is Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, go down to the description box, click on that Instagram link. Give me, give me a follow. We're trying to get the page up and going again. Uh, we had 90,000 followers on the old Instagram page that they took away from me. So, you know, I got a couple thousand followers now, which I'm thankful for, but I know we can do better. I know my my, my folks here on this YouTube channel, my subscribers, I know we can do better than 2,000 followers. So if you don't mind, and, and if you, 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 you're on Instagram, now if you're not on Instagram, I get it. You, you're not an Instagram person. You don't, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna get on Instagram. I understand that. But if you are on Instagram, why not follow your boy? Why not rock with your boy, right? So get down to the description box if you don't mind. Click on that Instagram link. Richard Fame Millionaire Mentor, give me a follow and then send me a DM to say hello. Let me know you're rocking with me. I really would appreciate that because we, 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 we got some good stuff we're going to be doing on the Instagram page. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some lifestyle stuff. I'm going I'm to bring the cars on the Instagram page. Obviously, we're going to do financial stuff. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's what most of the Instagram page will still be is more, more financial uh nuggets and tips and breadcrumbs we're going to be doing that on the instagram page but i'm going to also mix in there some traveling i'm going to mix in there some some lifestyle stuff and, and some car stuff so uh, if you're interested in that to, to to follow me and see what i'm up to when i'm not doing youtube videos get down to the description box and click on that instagram link and follow richard fame millionaire mentor appreciate you uh for wherever you're from in the United States, across the world, I appreciate y'all uh, dropping in. As you come in, please hit that thumbs up. Lock it in with a thumbs up. Let me know we, we, we uh, are rocking together. You guys support me. I support you. And, and, and the way you can support me is by hitting that thumbs up button for me and, 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 and letting me know, hey, Richard, I support you and we appreciate you. Because you guys know I, I support you and I appreciate you. That's why I'm here every day doing this content. That's why I'm here every day giving you this, 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 this financial information to help you build wealth. So if you're rocking with me, lock it in with a thumbs up if you don't mind. And um, I really would appreciate that. If you want seven free stocks, Moomoo is going to give you seven free stocks when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account and put $100 in there. They're going to give you seven free stocks, but not any old stocks, they're going to give you the Magnificent Seven, which is seven of the top 15 companies in the world. The Magnificent Seven, they're going to give you fractional shares, seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven when you open a new Moomoo brokerage account and you put $100 in there. All you got to do is go down to the description box, click on that Moomoo link. It's the first link. Click on that Moomoo link. Open up your new Moomoo account today and, and, and start building wealth. And, and you're going to start building wealth right away because they're going to give you seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. Like I said, tops, 
seven of the top 15 companies by market share, or not market share, but market cap in the world. And, and that's value. The most valuable companies in the world, we got seven of the top 15 in the Magnificent Seven, and you're gonna be getting fractional shares of those top seven companies when you deposit $100 in your Moomoo account. So don't delay, get started today. Get down to that description box, click on that Moomoo link, and go get the Magnificent Seven. And then you take your $100 and you can buy some more fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven, or you can buy your favorite companies, whether you buy whole shares or fractional shares, because you can do that on the Moomoo app as long as you got money in it. Got to have at least $100 in the account in order to be able to start doing fractional share trading, right? But what a great way to start building wealth for yourself when, when you're going to be given seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. And you can say in your stock portfolio, you have seven, you are a owner in seven of the top 15 companies in the world by market cap, by value, right? You can say that, hey, I, in my portfolio, I have NVIDIA. In my portfolio, I have Apple. In my portfolio, I have Microsoft. Those are the three largest companies in the world, right there. Microsoft is number one, Apple is number two, NVIDIA is number three. You will have them in your portfolio, your stock portfolio. How many people have the top three companies in the world in their stock portfolio? Not many, and you're getting them potentially for free. Why? Because when you open your Moomoo account, they're gonna give you seven fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven. So don't delay. Go get the Magnificent Seven today. Well, guys, thank y'all so much for your response uh, to the new website. We just launched it yesterday, and you guys have, have really been great. You guys have went over to the website. I got people signing up for the Richard Fay Millionaire Mentor membership club like crazy. So thank you. We, we've we gotten so many people signed up for the membership club, the, the Millionaire Mentor Membership Club. And thank you, number one, thank you. You guys, I, I'm so pleased with, with the response we've gotten on the website. Uh, the membership club is gonna be lit, guys. I'm telling you, if you, if you want to have a weekly small group one-on-one -on -one session with me outside of YouTube where I'm going to be dedicated to just focused on you for 90 minutes once a week. You got to get over to the website and you got to sign up for the membership club. You, you do. We're going to start the membership club. It's going to start in May and we're going to start having our live meetings every week starting in May. So don't delay, get down to the description box and click on the website link. It's the Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor website. It's right down there, right below the Moomoo link. If you want to be a part of that membership club and it's filling up and, I, and I'm going to cap it off at a certain number of people because I don't want it to get too crazy and, and I can't really devote enough time to answering people's questions and walking people through things I wanted to be a, a select group. So listen, once we get to a certain limit, we're going to cut it off. So don't delay. Don't don't miss out on that member, that 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 millionaire mentor membership club. So and what do you get for that? Well, you're going to get access to me. For 90 minutes every week. Well, we're going to talk about all things financial freedom. That's what you get. That's what you get. You get me for 90 minutes and my 25 years of experience doing what? Building wealth, right? 25 years of banking experience where I know everything that it is to know about borrowing money to buy real estate for income. I can walk you through every phase of it, how to borrow money, how to acquire the property, how to manage the property, how to sell the property. Whatever you want to know, I've already done it. I have did it for 25 years. Plus, I've worked with real estate investors for 25 years in my banking career. I had real estate 
investors who were clients of mine who had in excess of $100 million in real estate, guys. They were my clients. I lent money to them to buy more real estate. So I know what I'm doing. If you want to be a part of that membership club, here's your opportunity before it fills up and we got to cap it, right? Here's your opportunity. Go down to the description box. Click on the website link. Also, don't forget, we got digital products on the website as well, on the website, rather, that can assist you to get to your financial freedom. You want to know how to start an online business, we got something on the website that can help you do that, right? We got a digital product on the website that can help you and walk you through how to start an online business. If you're brand new and you're just starting out with stock market investing, we got a couple of digital products on there. We got an index fund digital product that walks you through how to buy index funds. We also have another product on there called the Drip Investment product. It teaches you all about reinvesting dividends and why it's so important to reinvest them when you're in the building stage of wealth. See, guys, I can't go through everything with you on this YouTube channel. I can't, I can't sit on, 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 on in, in emails and try to give you a laundry list of everything you need to do in an email. I'd be there all day with emails. I can't do that. That's the reason I created the website, so you have resources. So when people come to me and say, hey, Richard, how do I start an online business? Can you help me with that? I point them to the website. That's where the information is. It will tell you how to start one. Right. If you if you're a business owner and, and, and you're trying to figure out how do I expand this business? I got a product on there for for business owners or people who want to be business owners. Small business. Re, uh, I think it's the small business survival guide. Tells you what you need to know, even if you're in business or you want to start one. Right. Oh, I want to learn how to buy real estate with little or no money down. We've got a product on the website that walks you through that. Right. Oh, guys, I'm trying to get my mindset right. I'm trying to get the mindset right so I can I can build this. Well, yeah, we got a millionaire. Mindset. Digital product that talks that walks you through that, how to change your mindset, how to be better with money. We got that. We also got one on there that helps you with budgeting. Helps you with personal budgeting. We also have one on there for credit repair or how to build a better credit score. We got that on there as well. So we got a host of products on it that cover everything that I cover on the YouTube channel, but more in depth. Right. So we got those digital products. And we got the, the, the Millionaire Mentor Membership Club. And we're going to be adding more things as we learn more things. As I come across more things that I think are beneficial to you guys, I add them to the website. That's how it's going to work. So we are a resource, a full resource for you guys now. Not just the YouTube videos. Not just the one-on-one the -on -one mentoring that I still do. You can sign up for that on the, or send me an email through the website for the one-on-one. -on -one. And then we got the membership club, which is going to be a group of us, right? Where we're going to be online live every single week, guys, 52 weeks a year. This ain't no, oh golly, I signed up for this thing and Richard, he, he never is on there. Uh-uh. Y'all know how I rock. Y'all know I don't mess around. I'm here every day on live streams. Every day. Seven days a week. Every day I'm here. Rain or shine, I'm here. So when I tell you I'm going to be there on the membership club every week for 90 minutes, dedicated just to my club members, that's it. I'm going to be there. So all I'm telling you is use the website as a resource. Get down to the description box and click on the link for the Millionaire Mentor website. Go grab you a couple of digital products. Sign up for the Millionaire Mentor Membership Club. It's an investment in you guys, not in me. It ain't an investment in me. It's an investment in yourself. That's the biggest investment you can make is in you, right? So, all right. So, let, let's, let's move on. We got a lot to cover. We already know that uh, we're in some pretty... Pretty hot, volatile times right now because everybody is trying to figure out 
what's the Fed's next move? So today we're just going to cover potentially the Fed increasing rates. And, and, and how do we handle that? How do we handle that as investors if that's the worst case scenario and the Fed actually does have to? Guys, that's a, I don't know why for some reason we think that's not a possibility. It is. Now, we don't want it to happen, but it's a possibility. I mean, the Fed could literally increase short-term interest rates. If, 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 if inflation doesn't get itself back in line, that's their only choice. The only choice they have at some point, if inflation won't get itself in line, they have to increase rates. You, you need to know that and you need to prepare for that. That's the whole point of this. You need to know and prepare, right? So we're going to talk about the potential of a rate hike. One of your, your, major, your major banks, your major Wall Street firms walks us through if the Fed has to increase rates, what that would look like. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to also talk about the U.S. economy. And why some people are predicting something may break in 2025 if something, if something doesn't happen here soon. Something might break in our economy. And again, guys, that's, that, that's recession, right? We're going to talk about that. So, so, so those are the two things that we really want to talk about today. And then we're going to throw in a little bit of Bitcoin at the end. And we may throw in some Joe Biden as well, just depending on how much time we got. We may throw a little Joe Biden in. He's... he's he, he got something going on here that we need to we need to talk about. He, he's trying to give some money to one of these private sector companies. And, and, and of course, anything that comes from the government, you know who pays for it. You and me. Taxpayer dollars. That's how they get their money. So any money they give to the private sector, guys, uh, and, this, and the money he's trying to give to the private sector is a big chunk of money. That's our money. <laughs> we pay taxes. That's how the government collects money, right? That's where they're... The money coming from us that he's going to give to the private sector. So we may talk about him if we got some time. But let's let's jump into this major bank who's who's saying uh, that there could potentially be uh, rate hikes. Here's the headline: Fed hiking rates to six and a half percent is real risk, says UBS. Right, big boy blue chip bank. Right, UBS. They're saying it's a real risk that the Fed could raise interest rates to six and a half. What are interest rates today? They're five and a half. The Fed funds rate is five and a half. If they jack rates to six and a half, what does that do to our economy? What does that do? It ain't good, guys. It's not good. It's not good. Money is already super expensive to borrow now. If they increase the Fed funds rate by another 1%, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be impossible to borrow it. Plus, it's going to be impossible for small business owners to keep their doors open because they need to borrow money to keep their doors open. And I've already told you guys, 95% of the businesses in the United States are small businesses, not your big boy blue chips. They represent 5% of the businesses. 95% of the businesses are small businesses, under 500 employees, under $7 million in revenue. They are going to get run over like a, a they're going to get run over by a freight train, a financial freight train if rates go up to six and a half percent. But let's read on. Let's see what UBS has to say here. The combination of strong U.S. growth and sticky inflation is raising the odds the Federal Reserve hikes rather than cuts interest rates. So y'all think I'd be drying here joking. This is out there in the marketplace. Whether you want to hear it or not, it's in the marketplace. This is what people are starting to say now. Not just me. I'm talking about big boy blue chip companies like J.P. Morgan Chase. Remember we covered Jamie Dimon coming out saying interest rates could go to 8%. He said 8%. This is the largest bank in America. This is the fifth largest bank in the world. Their CEO is saying Fed could jack rates to 8%. Now you got UBS coming out saying they could jack them to 6.5%. Either scenario is catastrophic for small business owners. Either scenario is catastrophic for consumers. 
believe me, you. It's not catastrophic for the 1%, but for you and me and small business owners, it's catastrophic. Catastrophic, guys. The combination of strong U.S. growth and sticky inflation is rising, raising the odds that the Federal Reserve hikes rather than cuts interest rates, bringing borrowing costs to as high as 6.5% next year, according to UBS Group AG Strategists. While the bank's base case is for two rate cuts this year, UBS now sees a growing possibility that inflation falls or fails to decline to the Fed's target, which is 2%, spurring a pivot back to hikes and sparking a deep sell-off in bonds and stocks. See, assets suffer when rates go up. Assets suffer. Assets go down when rates go up. This is UBS, guys. This is not just some obscure little, you know, economist saying something. This is UBS. Go look them up. Big boy. Blue chip. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just telling you what's out here and what the market is starting to think. And if these guys are thinking that, Jamie Dimon is thinking that from J.P. Morgan Chase, there are more people starting to think this. So just, just be prepared to get yourself ready just in case. Prepare for the worst, expect the best. Markets have already scaled back. Bets on policy easing as recent U.S. data has shown surprising strength in the, the world's biggest economy, which is the United States. We're the world's biggest economy. And when they say people are starting to scale back, that's why you've seen what you've seen in the stock market in April. In April, the stock market, most of April, the stock market has, has, has sold off. And, and, and that sell-off is really big-time investors, institutional investors, taking profits. See, they just decided, I'm going to take my profits because we don't know when the Fed is going to reduce and we're not going to lose our profits. Let's just take our profits. Remember, you're not a big boy investor. So you, 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 there ain't no, you know what I'm saying? See, big boy investors can take their profits and, and, and just move on because they're, they're dealing in billions and trillions of dollars when they invest. You and me, we're dealing in hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. We ain't got nothing to, to, to sell yet. We ain't built no wealth yet. So these guys already got wealth. See, when you already got wealth and you invested in the stock market, you can do it short term. See, I can take a billion dollars. I can take a $3 million, $5 million, $20 million. I can take that and put it in the stock market for three months and take it out and make a lot of money because I've already got $5 billion. I already got $20 billion. I already got $50 billion. You know, matter of fact, you didn't even got to go that high. You got people out here that got a million dollars, $2 million, $3 million. They can do short term because they're already rich. They already got money. So they don't need to leave it in their 10 years. But when I'm depositing $100 a, a, a month in my Moomoo account and I'm buying stocks at $100 a month, I ain't got no wealth yet. So ain't no need to me taking it out. If something does catastrophic happen, the best thing for me to do, since I don't have wealth and I'm trying to build wealth, is I just keep buying. Even if it goes down, I keep buying if it's the right investments. See, big time investors don't have to do that because they're already wealthy. They already got a lot of money. You and I don't have no money yet. So the best thing for us to do is just stay in for 10 years. This thing will recover. Even if it slides back, it will recover. Why do you say that, Richard? Because it always has in a whole, in 100 years. It's always recovered. It's always recovered, guys. And it always will as long as we have a stock market, as long as we have a United States, as long as we have a U.S. economy that leads everything, as long as the U.S. dollar is the, the, the world's reserve currency, it'll bounce back. We got more billionaires than anybody in the world in this country. We got more billionaires than anybody else in the world. We got three of the top. No, matter of fact, we got seven of the top most valuable companies in the world right here in the United States. We're the gold standard, guys. We're the 900 pound gorilla on the hill. So as long as we maintain that, the market will bounce back. I don't see that being jeopardized in the next 10 years. So even if the, the Fed does jack rates to six and a half 
or eight or whatever they jack it to. And let's say the stock market falls. Let's say the stock market sells off. Let's say real estate sells off, right? Let's say that does happen. Let's say businesses shut down. Let's say that does happen. That's still an opportunity for you and me to swoop in with our $100 a month, our $1,000 a month, our $2,000 a month, and buy these great assets at a discount. And as soon as it corrects itself, oh, how do you know it'll correct itself? It always does. See, it always does, guys. And it will, as long as we are the gold standard, it will correct itself. I don't see that changing anytime soon. I don't. So all I'm telling you is what you need to be doing is having a strategy both ways. Y'all know my strategy, right? My strategy is I build wealth anyways. Interest rates go down, I build wealth. Interest rates go up, I build wealth. How can you do that, Richard? I do that because I'm in the market 365 days a year and I understand long term it's going to be fine. I understand when rates go up, assets go down, I buy more assets because I know those assets at some point will return to a premium. Just like they did in 2022, just like they did at uh, uh, March and April of 2020, just like they did in the great financial crisis in 2008, just like they did in the dot-com bubble, just like they did in 1929 depression. Just name any of them and they've rebounded and became better. So all I'm telling you is don't be afraid of this. Just understand the strategy. The strategy is I don't care what happens. I'm going to buy assets for 10 years. The best of the best. Big boy blue chip. No matter what happens. Right. That's what you got to keep in mind as we go through this. No matter what happens, I buy assets for the next 10 years. If the expansion remains resilient and inflation gets stuck at two and a half or higher, there would be a real risk. The FOMC, which is just the Federal Reserve, that's all it is, resumes raising rates again early next year. So they're just saying if inflation doesn't get below two and a half percent this year, 2024, if they don't get below two and a half percent, then in 2025, their opinion is, their prediction is the Fed will start increasing rates, not decreasing. This is UBS. This is their opinion, right? Fed funds by reaching six and a half. Here it is. Let, let, let's start over here. If the expansion remains resilient and inflation gets stuck at two and a half or higher, there will be real risk. The FM, the FOMC resumes raising rates again by early next year, reaching six and a half percent Fed funds rate by mid, mid next year. So a year from now. Right. Said UBS strategists, including Brian Pringle and whoever this guy's name is. The call shows how major banks are coming to terms with the possibility that the, the most aggressive hiking cycle since 1980s taken by the Fed's rate to five and a half percent might not be over just yet. UBS has already tempered an aggressive view of 275 basis points of U.S. cuts this year to now forecast just 50. So these guys started out with rate cuts at the beginning of the year. They started out with the Fed decreasing rates by 250 basis points. They've cut that projection to 50 basis points. If the Fed don't reduce by June or July, they'll cut it to zero. I'm just telling you what's gonna happen. And this is not the only bank, guys. I've already told you the largest bank in America, J.P. Morgan Chase, their CEO is saying the same thing. He's saying the same thing. So what does that mean for us? Nothing other than we keep investing. That's it. it we just keep investing. Why? Because we got a 10-year window. I got a 10-year window. It, 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 if, if SPLG, FTEC, the Magnificent Seven, go down in per share price? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I get to buy them cheap. 
and just hold them for 10 years. I know they're going to go back up. Why? Because history says they will. That's all. See, if they raise rates and values go down on my assets, then I buy more. I just buy more because I know at some point they rebound and they trade at a premium. That's where I build my wealth. If rates don't go down, uh, let's say rates don't go up and they just stay at the five and a half, I continue to buy. Let's say they bring rates down. What do I do? I continue to buy. I just keep buying, guys. I keep buying through any cycle. I just buy because I got a 10-year window. Here's my whole plan. I believe everything I buy today, everything I buy tomorrow, everything I buy next week, everything I buy next month, everything I buy next year in 10 years is worth more. How do I know that? Well, the market says that. That's what history says. If I buy the right investments, if I buy the right investments, history's history tells me they worth more tomorrow than they are today. If I bought the S&P 500 in 2014, I bought it at 2,000 points. If I held it for 10 years, 2,024, guess what is trading at in 2024? 5,200 points. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. See, see I bought it at 2,000 points in 2014, held it for 10 years, it more than doubled itself. Who says it can't do that in the next 10 years? I believe it can. So if I'm buying the S&P at 52 today, I hold it for 10 years and it's trading at 8,500 points, 9,000 points, 10,000 points. I just made out like a fat rat because I was patient. Doesn't matter, guys. Doesn't matter what these rates do. You buy. You keep buying. The, the, the thought process is my investments, I don't care what price I buy them at today, they are going to be worth more in 10 years. Oh, NVIDIA is trading at $900 a share. Why would I buy it that high? Because it's going to be eighteen dollars to $2,000 a share. That's why you would buy it that high. At some point, if you hold it long enough, right? It is. NVIDIA has 12 x itself, guys, in the last eight years. It went from $5 billion in revenue in 2016 to $60 billion in revenue in 2024. Projected to 12x again in the next eight years. So you believe whatever you want to believe, but I'm telling you, the way you beat all of this is getting yourself in the market every single day, your money in there every day for the next 10 years, and you keep buying. That's how you win. That's how you win. How do you know you win like that, Richard? Because I did it for 25 years. That's how I know. I didn't read it in a book. I actually did it. I actually did it for 25 years and continue to do it. I'm going to do it for another 10 years, and then I'm done. And then I'm done with the stock market after that. I'm done. Get your strategy in place, guys. I keep telling you, you better get your strategy in place. I'm telling you, get your strategy in place. You can copy mine if you want. It's so-called no landing scenario of more rate hikes would prompt a sharp flattening of the U.S. Treasury curve as benchmark yields move meaningfully higher, as well as a 10 to 15 percent slide in equities. So they're thinking if they got to get these rates to six and a half percent, the stock market is going to be on discount about 10 to 10 to 15 percent next year. Hallelujah. Oh, what do you mean, Richard? Hallelujah. Why are you why, why do you want your assets to go down in value? Well, listen, guys, see, I'm not a short term thinker. I'm a long term thinker. See, short term thinkers. Oh, golly, I'm losing all my money. Oh, golly. That's a short term thinker who got no game plan. They just doing whatever the, the, the wind, wherever the wind blows, they blow. I like that. I know what the stock market cycles are, and I know what these assets are going to do if I can buy them at 10 to 15 percent discount. They're going to do the same thing they did in 2022 when I bought them at a 20 percent discount. What did they do in 2020? I mean, 2020, March and April of 2020, when the pandemic hit, stock market went down by 30 percent. 57 days later, it was trading at all-time highs again. What happened then? That, that's supposed to have been the end of the world. 2008, 
great financial crisis. That's supposed to be the end of the world. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. 2022. Oh my God, you better get out. The, 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 the sun is disappearing. End of the world. 2023. Last nine weeks of 2023, stock market went on one of the greatest runs in the history of the stock market. And if you were in the market 365 days a year, like I'm asking you to be, you'd have won. But for y'all folks out here want to try to time the market, oh, pfft, pfft, let me get my money out. What money you got to get out? You got $5,000 in there. Don't get me wrong, that might be your life savings, but that's not wealth. It's not wealth. Wealth is defined by your assets generate enough money to take care of you. That's wealth. You having $10,000 in your money market account is not wealth. That's not wealth. That might be a nice little chunk of change. That might be a nice rainy day fund. But it ain't going to take care of you if something happened to your, your ability to work. That little $10,000 ain't going to take care of you guys. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all. Y'all are like, oh, I know it's my life savings. But okay, that life savings ain't going to last long. You better be trying to build some real wealth and take a little bit of risk and build some real wealth because that little 10,000, 5,000, 50,000, whatever you got in your little money market account is not going to take care of you for the rest of your life. It's not. It's not wealth. Wealth does what? It takes care of you. That's wealth. I don't care what the dollar amount is as long as it takes care of all of your needs. And you don't have to work. That's wealth. If you haven't got to that point in your life, then you ain't at financial freedom. You should be putting your plan together to get to financial freedom. I'm just telling you guys, this is, this is not bad news. This is how the market works. But we win anyways if we get in. We win anyways. It doesn't matter. We win. Get down to that description box, click on that Moo Moo link, get yourself signed up, get the Magnificent Seven for free. Seven shares or fractional shares of the Magnificent Seven for free. Link down in the description box, guys. U.S. Treasury's curve as benchmark yields move meaningfully higher as well as 10 to 15% slide in equities, the strategist projected. Please slide 10 or 15%. I know a lot of y'all are saying, what is this dude talking about? You, you, you're supposed to be trying to make money in the stock market, not lose money. I, I haven't lost a dime in the stock market. Maybe y'all have lost it. I haven't lost anything. I, I don't lose anything unless I give up and sell it all. Then I might lose something. But I ain't giving up and selling nothing. And anyways, my portfolio has been through this before, guys. My portfolio has been through this. Man, you think my portfolio took a hit a temporary, see, this is, this here's the key, temporary. Temporary is what you guys got to understand. I got 75% of my net worth in the stock market. Everything's up except one thing. Everything that I've invested in right now is up except one, and that's Tesla. That's the only thing that, that's not up. Now, it would be real easy for me to cut bait on Tesla right now because they're slashing prices, they're laying off people, everybody's saying they're done, da 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 What am I doing? I don't listen to none of that. I just stay in it because I got another 10 years. I don't care if I got to stay in it for 20 years. I'll stay in it however long I need to stay in it. And guess what? If I'm dead and gone, Tesla go to my kids. Oh, you got some Tesla stock from dad reading the wheel. Oh, golly, he left you a pretty nice sizable Tesla stock. That's where it's going to go. That's what it's going to do. See, I don't play that. I know what I believe Tesla's going to do. Now, when Tesla's no longer the number one EV company in the world, when they're no longer the number one charging, Elon Musk move on, something like Until then, I'm in it to win it. I just done forgot about it. I don't even worry about it. Everything else up. Everything else. Knocking it out the park. Why? Because I stay in the market. Now, if it declines by 10 or 15%, what do I do? I do nothing. I just buy more. 
because I know eventually that 10 or 15% decline, temporary, that's the key word, guys, temporary, not permanent, two different words. Temporary decline, not permanent decline. It's one thing if I'm buying assets that get a permanent decline, like Hertz rental car. That's a permanent decline. I don't buy those kind of companies. See, I don't buy Hertz rental car. That's a permanent decline. Tesla is a temporary decline. That's what I believe. You believe whatever you want to believe, right? So, so on a temporary decline of 10 or 15%, I ain't sweating it because I know it's temporary. I know eventually it goes, it will climb back up. I know eventually SPLG, FTEC, the Magnificent Seven will slowly climb back up when the market climbs back up. And before you know it, I'm, I'm whole again. But, 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 but while it was down at that 10 or 15%, I gobbled up a bunch of discounts. And that whole gobbling I did at 10 or 15% down, all that gobbling, all that, all that, all that Pac-Man, now that you ever seen the game Pac-Man, you go Pac-Man be coming through there eating up them little balls. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just be a Pac-Man. 10 or 15% discount Pac-Man. And then guess what's going to happen? It's going to right size itself. Fed going to reduce rates. Economy is going to, ooh, golly. Fed and reduce rate. All of a sudden, you're going to see the stock market run. And all that stuff I bought at 10 or 15% discount while all y'all was scared and hiding. Oh, golly, the world's coming to an end. I'm going to put money in my money market account. Listen, man, you taking money out of the stock market, putting your money market account when it ain't wealth. What good is that? You, you, what you should be doing is figuring out, am I investing in the right things? Am I investing in the right assets that have a historical track record of performance? If you're in that, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? I wouldn't be worried about anything if I'm in the right assets and I got the right programming in my filter system. The call followed stronger than expected U.S. inflation data last week and came ahead of the U.S. retail sales Monday that also topped estimates. So you got, this is what you got, guys. You got inflation still sticky. It won't come down to 2%. It's still 3%, hovering in that 3% somewhere. Fed needed that 2%, but it's, it's sticky. It won't move. It's still at the 3%, right? Then you got retail sales come out that show people are still spending money like crazy, even with inflation high. That's a double whammy when it comes to interest rates, guys. The Fed is not going to reduce interest rates when they see the job market red hot, inflation sticky, and people still spending money like crazy through retail sales. Retail sales comes in at 0 0.7 when, when they thought it was coming in at 0 0.3. Shattered expectations. That's what they're talking about. U.S. retail sales Monday that also topped estimates. The estimate was 0.3%. Came in at 0.07%. So hotter than expected. People still spending money like crazy, basically. That's made for a string of hot data points. Fanning concerns that inflation is becoming entrenched. All that means is it's stubborn. It ain't going to go below 3%. That's what they mean in trench. It's going to dug in. You know how you, 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 you dig a hole, you get in a trench, you dig a hole, and you, you just in there. Right? That, that, that's what they're saying inflation is doing. It's just stubborn. It won't move. It won't, you, you can't get it to move no matter what you do. Traders have drastically paired bets on Fed easing rate price to 41 basis points by December, down from 150 basis points at the start of the year. So, 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 so it went down. People done lost faith. It then went all the way down from 150 basis points to 41. So, so the market is just saying, oh my God, these guys may not interested to reduce interest rates at all. Investors are in the early stages of worrying about an economy that may be running too hot. The UBS strategist said, in a high inflation scenario, we would expect both government bonds to sell off and credit spreads to widen, making for a big catch down in multiples. There you go. 
That's what you got. Your big boy bank, UBS, is saying about what's going on with what they believe the Fed is going to do next year with rates. Jack it up to 6.5%. 10 to 15% fall sell-off in the stock market. Now, let's take a look real quick just to kind of wrap this thing up. Let's take a look at this particular story. Here's the headline. U.S. economy will see more things break in 2025 if rates stay high. One on one side saying rates are going to stay high. Matter of fact, they're going to increase them. On the other side, they're saying if rates stay high, this is what you can expect. Something's going to break in the economy. So let's take a look at this one here. The U.S. economy could be headed for stormy waters in 2025 if the Federal Reserve does not take action soon on interest rates. State Street's head of investment strategy, right? These are the these are these economists guys are starting to. The classic monetary mechanisms had broken, meaning that any changes made by the Fed will now take longer to trickle down into the real economy, potentially delaying any major shocks. The traditional transmission policy mechanism has broken or doesn't work as well. The research chief attributed that shift to two things. Firstly, U.S. consumers whose largest liability is typically their mortgage, which were mostly secured on a longer term fixed rate basis during the pandemic low interest rate era. Similarly, U.S. companies largely refinanced their debts at lower rates at the same time. As such, the impact of, for example, sustained higher interest rates may not be felt further down the line when they come to refinance. So basically what they're saying is, is in 2020, when the pandemic broke out, right, people were able to shortly after that get mortgages at a super low rate, lock in. And they called them the pandemic mortgage rates. They locked in at the pandemic mortgage rates. A lot of people did. Not only just consumers on mortgages, a lot of businesses locked in rates during the pandemic, low rates. They locked in too. Here's the problem though. With businesses, they can't lock into a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. It's not exist, it don't exist. So they gotta lock into like a three year loan or a five year loan. Problem is a lot of these companies that locked in during the 21, Maybe they did a three-year deal. Maybe they did a four-year deal. They're starting to come due. And they're going to come due and they got to reset those loan rates at a higher rate today than they did after the pandemic. Same thing with people, mortgages. You're locked into that rate, so you're kind of locked into where you live because you don't want to give up that rate. You know if you give up that rate, you may not be satisfied where you live, but you stay because of the rate. You don't want to trade your 3.5% rate for a 7.5% rate. Right? So, 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 so not only do you get the housing market that suffers because you don't have the activity that you normally would have in a low interest rate environment, you have a lot of activity in a low interest rate environment because people can move around. They can, oh, I don't like this house. Let's go to this one. You don't get that now. You got businesses that are panicking because their loans are getting ready to come due 24 and 25, some of them in 26. And you got these skyrocket rates. They're already struggling. They're laying off people in some sectors of, 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 of our, 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 our labor market. They're laying people off. You just saw Tesla lay off. I don't know. What did they say? I can't remember the percentage they laid off laid off a large part of their their world their international their label for force tesla did so 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 what they're saying is is you really haven't seen the real effects of higher interest rates yet but you will as these businesses these loans come due you're going to start feeling it see you got to understand guys when businesses get affected consumers get affected too why because consumers work for these businesses and if these businesses get affected and they got to lay people off that means 
The consumers don't have no money to spend. The only thing stopping us right now from going into a full-blown recession is the labor market. So that's basically what he's saying. You got delayed effect. See, these interest rates ain't really caught up yet because of the pandemic rates. But they're going to catch up here soon, is what he's saying. They they're going to catch up. They're going to catch up to the economy soon, real soon. So he, he's basically saying similar to U.S. companies largely refinance their debt at lower rates at the same time. As such, the impact of, for example, sustained higher interest rates may not be felt until further down the line when they come to refinance. See, I just told you that. When they come to refinance. A lot of companies ain't feeling it yet because their debt hasn't came due yet, but it's coming. It's coming. In commercial real estate, there is one, I think there's one trillion dollars worth of commercial real estate that's coming due. 24 and 25. That's huge, guys. That's a huge number. That's going to rock the economy if these rates don't come down and these companies or these real estate investors are forced to refinance at higher rates. Cuts cash flow. Tenants are already leaving. You got less cash flow and you, and you got your occupancy has went down. Just saying. This, so this is what these folks are talking about here. The problem is if rates stay at this level until 2025 when a big wall of refinancing is due. See, I just walked you through in simplest terms what that means. Pretty simple. Businesses borrow money to grow. Businesses do not borrow money on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. They borrow money on a three-year term, four-year term, five-year term. Those terms are coming due on billions and billions and billions of dollars in debt. And a lot of these companies cannot afford to go from a 3% rate on the loan to a 7% rate. They can't afford it. They can't afford it. That's what they mean by higher interest rates haven't caught up yet, but they're coming. When these loans start maturing this year, next year, and 26, yeah, yeah, that's when it catches up based on what these guys are saying. For now, consumers and corporations aren't feeling the pinch of higher rates, he's, he added. Expectations of a near-term Fed rate cut have faded lately amid persistent inflation data and hawkish commentary from policymakers. The San Francisco Fed president, Mary Daly, said Monday, there was no urgency to cut U.S. interest rates with the economy and labor market continuing to show signs of strength and inflation still above the Fed's 2%. That's all you needed to hear, right? Bingo, bongo, bingo, bongo. There you go. Everything you needed to hear was right there. As long as we have an economy that's resilient, a labor market that's resilient, there is no urgency to cut rates. There you go. No urgency. So what does that mean for us as investors? We keep investing. We pay it no attention. We just keep investing. We keep investing. We pay it no attention. We just keep investing. That's what we got to do. We got to keep earning. We got to watch what we spend the money that we earn on. And then we got to invest. That's what we got to do, guys. We got to continue to do that over and over and over and over. That's what we got to do, right? That's exactly what we got to do. We got to listen to this information right here. Not a problem with that. No, no problem listening to the information. We got to listen to the information. But what we can't do is get caught up in the information to a point where we stop investing. We can't. All we need to know is, OK, if the Federal Reserve uh, doesn't reduce short term interest rates, what does that do for us? We just got to keep investing. If they increase short term interest rates, we got to keep investing. That's what we got to do. We got to keep investing. We got a 10 year window. Right. We got a 10 year window. So as long as we in that 10 year window, we got to keep investing. Got to. We got a 10 year window before this thing is over. We got to keep investing. We cannot take our foot off the investing gas pedal. Not right now. 
We got to continue to earn. And I keep telling y'all, you protect yourself from a lot of this stuff by having multiple streams of income, guys. We got to have multiple streams of income, right? We got to have multiple streams of income. For those of you guys who are looking for ways to create an online business, for looking for ways to, um, you know, invest in real estate, hey, get down to the description box, click on the website link, Richard Fame Millionaire website. It's up and running. I got a lot of digital products in there that'll walk you right through how to start an online business. It'll walk you right through how to invest in real estate with little or no money down. It'll walk you right through how to invest in the stock market through index funds. It'll walk you right through how to invest in the stock market using the drip investment technique. All that stuff is there. It's a tool to help you build wealth, right? So all I'm telling you is if you're willing to make an investment in yourself, you can make this thing work, right? You, you, you got to get to a point where you consistently invest and buy assets. That's the point we got to get to. We got to get to a point where we consistently invest and buy assets. And we got to do it for a long period of time. That's the key, guys. And we got to do it for a long period of time. 10 years, 15 years. And I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear that because a lot of us are programmed to think we got to do it all in one year. We got to do it all in two years. I got to do it all in. No, you don't. No, you don't. You got to have a long term outlook, guys. For most of us, we don't have we, we have one hundred dollars a month, five hundred dollars a month, a thousand dollars a month. We can't take that type of small money in the big scheme of things and create wealth in one year. When I'm, only, when I'm only investing $100 a month. I can't build generational wealth if I'm only investing $100 a month. Right? That's a start. It's a starting point, and it's a wonderful starting point. But, but, but we got to get, we, we, we gotta get to a point where we, we understand that, that we, 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 you know, I got $5,000 a month coming in. I, I got to get to a point where I can get comfortable living on $3,000 a month. See, I got $5,000 a month coming in. I got to get to a point where I'm comfortable living on $3,000 a month. Then I can take $2,000 a month and invest it. That's how you build wealth. I'm just going to give it to you, the, 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 the truth. You, 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 $100 is great, guys, as a starting point. But we got to get to the point where we give up some of this crap we're buying and create more money to invest. If I'm making $4,000 a month, I, I got to get to a point where I'm comfortable living on $2,500 a month. And then I take $1,500 a month for the next 10 years and I put it in something that's going to multiply it. That's how you build wealth. Not sitting on the sideline with $3,000 in your money market account thinking, oh, I'm getting a 5% return on my money market account. That's not going to last. That's not going to last. No. No. That's not going to get you to wealth. That 3%, 4% you get in your money market account, guys, I, I, I got to just have a real serious conversation with you. That's not going to get you to wealth. Mm -mm. You got to have more of a return than that. You got to have at least an 8% rate of return. That's what you got to have. And you got to have it over a 10-year period. And you got to be putting serious money in the investments. And when I say serious money, I'm, I'm talking about, like I said, at least $1,000 a month. Now, I know some of y'all are saying, Richard, I, I can't do $1,000. That's okay, guys. Like I said, do what you can, but always set a goal for yourself to elevate more. When I started out, I started out with $150 every two weeks, guys. That's what I was putting into my company-sponsored 401k plan. I was putting in $150 Every two weeks, every two pay, you know, because I got paid twice a month and every they would deduct one hundred and fifty dollars, put it in the 401k, deduct one hundred and fifty. But but what I learned and I conditioned myself to was I always wanted to continue to set a goal to step up the investment. So I got a little raise. I said, OK, instead of one fifty, let's go two fifty. Got another raise. OK, instead of two fifty, let me go three fifty. Got another little raise, okay, 450, 550, 1,000 till I get it to whatever I needed to get it to in order for it to make sense 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And that's how I started. So it's, you can start off small, 
but you always should have a goal to increase it. The more you can put into these multipliers, guys, the more wealth you build. The less you put into the multipliers, the less wealth you build. It's that simple. It's that simple. So, so understand that no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what these guys say about inflation, no matter what these guys say about interest rates, no matter what they say, the thing that protects you and gets you to wealth is your ability to be consistent by putting money in really good assets that have a historical track record of multiplying money. If you do that, you're golden. And if you do it long enough, you got to do it long enough is the key, guys. you got to do it long enough. And I think 10 years is the sweet spot, right? Some, a guy like me, I did it the first time around. I did it for over 20 years. Exactly what I'm telling you. Every month, every month I was putting money in assets, whether it be real estate or whether it be the stock market. Those were my two asset classes at that time. I didn't have a business at that time. I was just working a regular W-2 job. But I kept putting that money in. And all of a sudden what happened was I started to see it grow. Started to see it compound. Right? You, you, you think about over the last 20 years. Matter of fact, it wasn't even 20 years. Let me give you all a good example of what I'm talking about. I started working for Wells Fargo. Matter of fact, it was Wachovia. So I started working for Wachovia Bank in 2005, which then turned into Wachovia because they bought Wells, uh, they, they, Wells Fargo bought Wachovia in, I believe, 2009. So, so 2005, I started kind of putting money in the little 401k. It was 2005. Wells took them over in nine. I left in 12. I left in 12. So I worked for Wachovia slash Wells Fargo from 2005 to 2012. Was that seven years? Okay. In those seven years, I just put in the minimum I needed to put in to the 401k. Whatever that was. Let's say it was 6% so they could give me 6%. I did that for seven years. Right? And I left. So, so when I left in 2012 to go to another bank, that 401k just sat there. I didn't, I didn't put no more money in it. Wells Fargo didn't put no more money in it. It just sat there until, I, until I'm, I'm going to roll it over. I just, just sat there. So for those seven years, I made contributions. And then from 2012 to today, which is basically what, 12 years later, 2024, 12 years later, I haven't made one contribution in 12 years. To that Bank of America, I'm not Bank of America, that Wells Fargo stock. Nothing for 12 years. No contributions. I, I contributed from 2005 to 2012, and that was it. That thing is worth almost $400,000 today. Why? Because I just left it in there since 2005. And now it's 2024, almost 20 years later. It's $400,000. And I haven't made a contribution to it since 2012. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, guys. This thing is real if you just follow the blueprint. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> haven't made a contribution since 2012. But guess what I was doing, though? Every quarter, they pay a distribution. Not a distribution, but a dividend. See, every quarter, they paid me a dividend. Not to me, I rolled it back into more Wells Fargo stock. I didn't take the dividend. Put it back into the stock. And over that, from, 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 from 2005 to 2024, I've reinvested every single dividend. And it turned it into about 6,200 6, shares, 6,200 shares of Wells Fargo stock worth about $400,000 today. Just telling you, and I hadn't made a contribution since 2012. It's doubled in value since 2012, doubled on its own. Why? Just the power of what? Compounding, taking the dividends and reinvesting them back in the back. See, see when Wells went down to $22 a share, 
when the pandemic broke out. Remember those days when wells went down to two, like $22 a share? Today is trading above 50 something today. See, if I'd have panicked, oh God, wait, oh my God, I'm gonna lose it all. I'm gonna lose it all. If I'd have panicked, cashed out of the Wells Fargo, took the little money and put it somewhere else, I'd have missed all that upside. But I didn't panic. I said, no, Wells Fargo is a, is, is a four horseman. It's one of the four largest banks in the United States. They're gonna bounce back. That's what I said in 20, when the pandemic broke out in 20, when that thing got down to like $22, $21 a share, I didn't panic. I said, it's a big boy, it's blue chip. It's a too big to fail. It'll bounce back. And guess what? Not even four years later, it's at 50 some dollars a share. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all guys. This thing, you got to get in this thing and you got to be in there long term. But you got to be in big boy blue chip. You can't be in none of these little crazy little companies. Now, you got to be in big boy blue chip proven track record. Best of the best. That's what I invested in. Same thing with Bank of America. Same story with Bank of America. I did the same thing with Bank of America. I can tell you story after story after story of just buying big boy blue chip companies and just sitting there. I can, same thing with VGT, bought VGT, Vanguard Information Technology VGT, bought it in September 2020. Bought it for $317 a share. And I just rode it out for three years. Roller coaster ride too, because you know what happened in 22. All of that stuff fell down. 21, it was at its all-time high. I didn't sell it. I kept it. It dipped in 22. I think it went all the way from like $450 a share in December of 21. It went all the way down to like the low 300s in 22. Didn't panic. Didn't panic once. Didn't flinch once. And then guess what it did? In 23, Started the, the, the march upward. Before you know it, by the end of 23, guess what that thing was trading at? They ain't going near $470 a share. Now it's over $500 a share. Just, just see, but it's big boy blue chip. All everything I buy, and I just stick in there. I don't panic sell. I don't let the propaganda media machine that the 1% throw out at y'all to change my mind and get me all afraid. I just stick in there. And that's what I'm going to do over these next 10 years with these three big boy blue chip assets that I'm buying. I'm going to do the same thing. I made a lot of money just being patient, guys. I'm not a smart guy when it comes to the stock market. I'm just a, a guy who follows big boy blue chip and I'm patient. I just follow the 1%. This is none of this stuff that I'm telling y'all is original to me. I learned it all from the 1%. Even though I'm a 99 percenter, I learned everything about investing from the 1 percent. I just follow them. I follow their little financial breadcrumbs to the bag. All I'm telling you guys is no matter what happens with interest rates, we want to be aware of what's going on in our economy because it, infect, it affects us as investors. But there is no substitute for getting yourself in the market 365 days a year and just stay in there long term. That's just my two cents. You do whatever you got to do. It's your financial freedom. It's your future. You do whatever you want to do. I'm just a guy on YouTube, but I've done this. I've given you several examples of, of over the years, the, the power of the compounding effect of the stock market if you're in the right investments and you reinvest dividends. Because a lot of us, oh, golly, what, do I, what about dividend stocks? What do you need dividend stocks for if you ain't got no wealth? Dividend stocks come into play when you actually have already built wealth. But if you're if you're hundred dollars a month and you talking about dividend stocks, what you going what's the dividend gonna be? Three pennies? Yeah, you're gonna have a whopping three pennies. The dividends only come into play, guys, when you've already built wealth and you got a certain level of wealth. That's when you go get dividend stocks. The hell I need dividend stocks if I'm depositing, I'm investing $100 a, a month. What I'm going to live on? Three pennies? Dividend stocks, what do I need a dividend stock for if I got no wealth? Don't get me wrong. I, I, whatever little dividends they pay me in, 
in, in, in, in SPLG, I'll take it. But I'm not in SPLG because I'm trying to get dividends from them. I'm in SPLG because I want growth. I want to take my little money and double it and triple it over the next 10 years. That's why I'm in SPLG. When I get to a point where I want income, I won't be in SPLG. I'm going to go find me a, a big old behemoth like AT&T and go get income from them. Then I'll go look for dividends when I built the wealth. But the dividends ain't going to do me no good unless I got wealth already. Now, what I will do with the dividends, like I told y'all in the scenario with Wells Fargo, I just reinvested them for the last 20 years. That's all. I just reinvested them. $400,000 little nest egg off of what? Patience. Hadn't made a contribution to it in 12 years. And it kept growing, doubling. Matter of fact, it doubled itself, more than doubled itself. I don't know what my cost base is in, but it ain't that much. My cost basis is probably like a hundred, hundred, hundred thousand. That might be my cost basis over that seven year period when I was making the little, you know, contributions to it. I don't even think it was that much, honestly. I ain't no way in the world I, I put no hundred thousand dollars in that thing from 2005 to 2012. I, no, there, it, maybe, but I doubt it. I doubt my cost basis is, is that much. My cost basis is maybe a hundred. So, so cost basis is a hundred. 300,000 in gain off of what? Compounding effect of the stock market. Just waiting, reinvesting, reinvesting. Re Think about all those reinvesting of dividends I did to buy stock when it was $22 a share back in 2020. Just think for that year, year and a half where I could buy dirt cheap. Matter of fact, it was for, the, for two, a couple of years I was buying it dirt cheap. Just recently, it started exploding back up to over 50 a share. I don't know, man. I'm just saying that's the power of the compounding effect of the stock market, though, if we would just hang in there. If we would get in a pattern and say, okay, I got $100. I'm going to put it in my Moomoo account. I'm going to get them seven free stock, the magnificent seven fractional shares. I'm going to get them, them shares, and then I'm going to continue to put $100 in. I'm going to put 200 in. I'm going to put 300 in. I'm going to put 500 in. And I'm going to stop buying all this stuff I don't need. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that money and put it in more assets. And I'm just going to do that for 10 years like this guy on YouTube is doing. I think you win. I think you win. But it doesn't matter what I think. It's up to you. It's your money. You do the best thing that you feel like you need to do for you and your family. I'm going to do the best thing I feel like I need to do for me and my family. You got to do the same for you and your family, right? You got to do the same for you and your family. One last thing, guys, and we're going to get out of here. Let's hit this crypto real quick. Um, analysts who called Bitcoin's pre-having rally 70K turns bearish. He turns bearish. The analysts who predicted Bitcoin's bottom in 2022 and the recent pre-having surge to record highs has turned bearish on risk assets, including technology stocks and cryptocurrencies. Our growing concern is that risk assets, stocks and crypto, are teetering on the edge of a significant price correction. The primary trigger is the unexpected and persistent inflation, with the bond market now projecting less than three cuts and 10-year treasury yields surpassing four and a half. We may have arrived at a critical tipping point for risk assets. We sold all our tech stocks last night as the NASDAQ is trading very poorly and reacting to the higher bond yield. We only hold a few high conviction crypto coins. Overall, we are bearish risk asset stocks and crypto. So here's the deal, guys. You got these guys now coming out. And again, you, you got to understand the psychology here. We're talking about big companies who have billions and billions of dollars invested in crypto in the stock market. It's very easy for them to pull their money out because they already have billions and billions of dollars. See, you and me, we ain't got billions and billions of dollars. So that's not the time for us to be pulling out. That's the time for us to be buying more. You see, do you see the psychology here? The, the psychology is, is when I'm already rich and I'm already wealthy, 
I don't want to lose that wealth for one second. So I take it out of the stock market because I'm already rich. There is no upside if things ain't going my way. The only side is down. But when I'm broke and I'm trying to get to wealth, the upside comes when I buy when things are going down. The upside comes when I buy and things go up. So that's why you got to be in the market 365 because we can we can take advantage of when things go down, we buy the dip. But we can also take advantage of, of, of being in the market so when things go to the moon, we're in there. See, these guys ain't got to worry about missing nothing going to the moon because they're already wealthy. They're already rich. They already got billions and billions and billions. When we don't have that, we don't have the luxury of picking and choosing when we want to get in the market. When we're trying to build wealth, we don't have the luxury to pick and choose. Number one reason we don't have the luxury is because we don't never pick and choose right. We always pick the wrong time. <laughs> so to, to avoid that, just get in the market, 365. Now I ain't got to worry about picking and choosing. I'm in the market. If it goes lower, I just buy at a discount. If it goes higher, I ride the wave, to, I wave the wave to the moon. I get on the rocket ship to the moon. The only way I win is I got to be in there all the time. Because even if I buy the dip and, it, and, it, and on the surface it looks like I'm losing, I'm really gaining if I'm willing to stay in long term. A.K.A. the story I just told you about Wells Fargo. See, I could have easily in 2020 said I'm losing. I'm losing, Richard. Sell all of that bank, that Wells Fargo stock and get out of that crap. Put it in the money market. Get out of it. It's 20 to a share. It's going to zero. You better get out of it. I could have easily listened to that and would have lost out on a couple hundred thousand dollars. But I didn't listen. Guess what I did? I just continued to reinvest the dividends and, and bought the dip. I bought the dip with the dividends because it was paying me a couple thousand dollars a quarter in dividends. So every time they paid a dividend, guess what? The $2,000, I bought the dip. Every time, I just bought the dip. Now, all of that dip that I bought in that year and a half, all of the dip I bought, now it's over $50 a share. It went from $22 over $50, $52 a share. $30 per share gain just by buying the dip and being patient. So when we're building wealth, we got to be in the market. If it dips, guess what? Buy the dip. If it bounces, guess what? Ride the wave. These billionaires, ain't, they can do that because they already got billions. So when guys like this come out, we sold all of our tech companies last night. We, 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 we moved out of cryptos and we, with the exception of certain ones. You already got billions of dollars you're moving, bro. That's why you got out. You got billions of dollars already. Why wouldn't you get out? You had a crazy first quarter. Why wouldn't you take profits and get out? I guarantee you, you'll be back. But see, for us, we don't, oh, golly, I had a great first quarter on my $1,000 I got in the stock market. I made a whopping 100 bucks. That's not going to take care of you for the rest of your life. So why in the hell would you take it out? Roll it black. Roll it back. You got to get that $1,000 up to $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000, $500,000. Now, I understand if somebody got $500,000 in the market, and they're getting close to the golden years. And they were like, you know something? I done had a good run, Richard. I'm out of here. Kudos to you. Get your money and get out. Go put it in the money market. I'm okay with that. But when you got $1,000 in there, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, and you're trying to run, what you running to? If you, see, that's the psychology we got to understand with this investing thing. If I ain't got no money in there significant enough to take care of me, what am I running from? Buy the dip. Ride the wave. If I got significant money in there and, and, I don't, and I'm, I'm close to the golden years, take it out. Move it to something safe. That's, that's it. I'm okay with that. I don't want people to lose their nest egg chasing more and more money. But if you ain't got no nest egg, then what are you taking out? If $1,000 is all you got to your name, you got, listen, you got some work to do. That's all I'm saying. You got some work to do. So that's it for us today, guys. I appreciate you rocking with me. Hey, do me a big favor. Get down to the description box. 
click on that Instagram link, sign up for Instagram, not sign up, but follow me on Instagram so we can get this Instagram page up. Right now we're teetering. We teetering on a couple thousand people all the way down from 90,000 in the last page down to what? 2,000 now. So let's get this thing up. If you don't, if you don't mind, if you want to rock with me outside of YouTube, that's the place to rock with me on Instagram. Get down to the description box. Click on that Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor Instagram link. Give your boy a follow and then hit me up with a DM saying, hey, man, I rock with you because y'all know I rock with you. I rock with y'all. So rock with me. Get down to the description box. Click on that Instagram link. Give me a follow today. We got a lot of good stuff we're going to be doing on the Instagram page. So I would love to see you guys over there participating and, 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 and hanging out with me. And, and, and you know, let's, let's, um, let's, let's build that page up to, to, to a respectable number. Also, if you don't mind, go check out the website. Go check out the website. Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor website. Second link down in the description box under the Moomoo link. A um, lot of good stuff over there. Like I said earlier in the live stream, man, we got so many people that are signing up for the Richard Fane Millionaire Mentor Membership Club that we're going to be doing exclusively outside of YouTube. Won't be no, 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 no YouTube stuff. We're going to be doing it in a whole different live stream on a different platform. So if you want to be a part of that 90 minutes where I'll be doing that every single week, 52 weeks a year for 90 minutes, I'm going to be on there. Y'all will have my undivided attention. Ask all the financial questions you want. We're going to go through all types of financial scenarios. Obviously, we're going to talk about stocks. We're going to talk about real estate investment. We're going to talk about businesses. We're going to talk about side hustles. We're going to have guests. We're going to do some, a lot of good stuff on that. So if you want to be a part of that membership club, go down to the description box. Click on that link for the website. Also, while you're over at the website, check out the digital products. Put a lot of time and effort, guys, into handpicking digital products that will help you get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So if you want to invest in yourself, you're not investing in me, guys. I've had some people already make some purchases of the digital products on the website that we just launched yesterday. So people are in there checking it out, sending me emails, signing up for the mailing list, all kind of stuff, which I'm grateful for. But this whole thing, in my opinion, is for you guys. I did not have to do a website. I could have just kept doing what I'm doing right now for the last four years, just making the YouTube videos and not, not doing anything else. But I said, no, it's time to step up the game. Let's start giving them, a, let's do more, right? You know, I, I've been giving a lot, so I need to give a lot, right? So if you want to check that out, go to the website, third link down in the, no, second link down in the description box, is the website, Richard Fame Millionaire Mentor um, website. Go down there and check it out. Sign up for that men membership club. Also, go grab some of them digital products. And of course, send me an email or a DM and let me know uh, what you think about it. Uh, my daughters and I, well, really my daughters put the website together. Two of my daughters, two of my older daughters put the website together, obviously under my instruction. And then I personally went out and picked the digital products along with one of my daughters. We, we both collabed on that. But I think it's from, from what I've been hearing from everybody, they, they, they're saying, hey man, nice website. We love, and, and again, I didn't hire somebody to do it. My daughters did it. Now, my daughter does have a background in, 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 in you know, technology and the internet, but she's no web designer, but she figured it out along with my other daughter. So, hey, if you appreciate that, like I said, I'm all about making things better for you guys if I can. If you don't want to rock with it, don't rock with it. But I'm just saying, hey, listen, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. That's how this world works, man. You want something from me, I want something from you. I think that's fair. I'm okay with that. That's an even exchange, right? You want something from me, I want something from you, right? So let's make each other happy, right? Let's, 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 let's work together to make this thing work for all of us, right? Let's do that. So get down to that description box, click on that link to the website, and um, don't just go through there and peruse, take action. The whole point of the website is for you to take action, not sit around and, oh, golly, your font's too big. No, just take action. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares about the font? See, this is, this is the psychology we gotta get past. 
See, the psychology of building wealth is get all the hurdles out of your way. That's the psychology of building wealth. Get all of the hurdles out of your way that builds, that, that, that will help, that will prohibit you from building wealth. Get those out of the way. Anything that will prohibit you from building wealth, get it out of your way. But, but uh, the font size, uh, they're too, the, the spacing, <laughs> see what I'm saying? No, don't worry about that. Look at the digital products. Join the membership club. Get, get you some freedom, right? I already told you it's, it's freedom or it's work for the rest of your life. Those are your two choices. Freedom or work for the rest of your life. Your choice. It, th there's no one going to knock on your door and say, hey, here's a million dollar check. No one. No one. If you want to learn how to start an online business, go to the description box and click on the link to the website. Got an ebook in there that'll walk you through the process. And then all you got to do then is just execute, take action. Right? That's all we can ask for, right? So get down to the website, check it out, give me some feedback, take action. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. If you want them seven, magnificent seven stocks, guys. Fractional shares, magnificent seven. Please hear me, guys. This is the magnificent seven. If you don't know what that is, please go to the Trillion Dollar Research Lab. Go to the One Trillion Dollar Research Lab and type in Magnificent Seven so you can find out what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with seven of the top 15 companies in the world. They're going to give you fractional shares of them just for opening your Moomoo account and putting $100 in. Now, don't stop with the $100, guys. You, you got to build wealth. Remember, $100, dividends on $100 is like a penny. That's not going to create wealth for you. So you just trying to grab the seven fractional shares and put a little hundred dollars in there and thinking, OK, what else do I do? Keep putting it in. Keep buying. Keep putting it in. Keep buying. Keep putting it in. Keep buying. Move it up to two hundred dollars. Keep buying. Move it up to three hundred dollars. Keep buying. Move it up to four hundred dollars. Keep buying. Move it up to five hundred dollars. Keep buying. And just do that for 10 years. That's the game plan, guys. It's not that complicated. We want to make it complicated. We definitely want to make it complicated, but it's not that complicated. Put money in there, buy the Magnificent Seven, or buy whatever you want to buy for the next 10 years. Just consistently do it every month and just let the compounding work. Reinvest all the dividends and let that compounding effect just work over the next 10 years on that $500 a month, that $1,000 a month, that $2,000 a month. That's what it takes. That's all you got to do. And again... Get down to the description box, click on the Moo Moo link, open it up, get your free stock, and you're ready to go. Send me an email, Richard, open my Moo Moo account, funded it, send me that wealth transfer blueprint video where you're going to walk me through your three big boy paper assets and tell me exactly what you're buying. So if I want to copy it, I can. I don't have to copy it. I can go plug in my own. But at least you got a blueprint. At least you got the process, the formula. You can plug in any investments you want, but it's the same formula, right? Plus, I'm going to send you the Moomoo tutorial video to walk you through how to use the app to make your first trade. So if you want that and the blueprint, send me an email once you have opened the Moomoo account and funded it. Link down in the description box for the Moomoo account. Link, I mean, not a link, but my email address is down in the description box as well. Well, thank you guys for rocking with me. I appreciate you. I got some things to do here on a Tuesday almost afternoon. I guess it is considered afternoon here, 12 o'clock here in, in Florida. Hope you guys have a rest of a wonderful day. Do something to get yourself one step closer to freedom, guys. Please do something today to get yourself one step closer to freedom. Please do something. Do something to get yourself one step closer to freedom today. Freedom is where we need to end up. We do not want to be working for somebody for the rest of our life. So please do something today to get yourself to your freedom. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. I, I really would appreciate that, guys, if you could hit the thumbs up before you bail out on me. I appreciate you rocking with me. I'm going to rock with you. I'll be back again tomorrow, 1030 a.m. Eastern time with another live stream. So please be a part of that. Please share the live stream videos. Please share all of the content to people that you believe need an impact in their financial life. And if you don't mind, like I said, before you get out of here, lock it in with a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.
Peace.